Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Just as I want to dance, I want to sing, I want to smile. Where will I start this? I should start from smiling. <laughs> Do you see it so genuine? What next again? That should be the last. If I dance, I will not be able to sing. Okay, which song you want me to sing? Okay. That's pekekere. I was listening to that. Pekekere, 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 pekekere. Good morning, church. We try to run, but uh, we are still just a baby before the gospel of Christ. Baby. Like King Agati, a nursery. Because when you see what is happening, it's like people are ignorant of things of the Spirit. You see them talking about the things of the Spirit, but they don't know what they are talking about. The case of Bible is not like that. We have taken Bible as literature. You know, literature is a letter. It's a letter. Some say it's a scripture. Your own scripture seems not to be inspired. One file that make the word of God unique is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Make it so unique. But scripture can just be letter if it's not inspired by the Spirit. So what are you reading? Which one is your Bible? The Bible you consider as letter or the one inspired by the Spirit? That is the question you need to ask yourself. The Bible demands the state of our heart before reading. It's not like a sort of other book. You cannot hold grudge and pick the Bible and begin to read. When you are disturbed in your heart and you are picking the Bible to read, you cannot hear from God. It's not possible. It's not a literature, it's not a history, it's not novels. Literature may not demand the state of your heart. You may be disturbed and read the literature. You may be crying and read the literature. You may hold your friend and read the literature. Unforgiveness, you read the literature, hatred. But the Bible is the scripture inspired by the Spirit. Demand the state of your heart. The question, what is the state of your heart? Tell your neighbor, what is the state of your heart while reading the Bible? Why carry the Bible? What is the state of your heart? The Bible demands the state of our world, our hearts. Let me take you to the book of Psalm 66, verse 18. If I had cherished sin, that is, if I have regarded sin in my heart, the Lord will not listen. That is, when you have sympathy, you conceal, you keep pain of the past, unforgiveness, hatred, envy, jealousy, and you are taking the Bible to read. You are not reading the Bible, I know, but you are reading literature. Don't forget, 
When you open the Bible and read, you are hearing God talk. Tell your neighbor, when you open the Bible and read, you are hearing God talk. Can you hear? Blessed are the pure in heart, and they shall see what. Will you be able to hear God? You cannot. You will not hear God. If you regard sin, if you keep the pain of the power, unforgiveness, hatred, your heart. The Holy Bible demands the state of your heart before reading. I know this is the first time you are hearing this because it's too elementary. This is King Agati. But these are the things we are bad on, we, we overlook. Can you imagine where our problem is coming from? We are facing the biggest challenge in our life. Ignorance of things of the spirit. If I have unforgiving spirits, pain of the past, envy, jealousy, I have to get rid of this before I open the Bible. Yes. Because open the Bible, read, you are hearing God's talk. How will you hear from God with envy in your heart? And our heart is the communication point. How will you hear from God with envy, jealousy, pain of the past, unforgiving spirit? You cannot hear from God. You cannot. Because reading the Bible is hearing God's talk. Everyone here. No single one is out of this. Everyone. Everybody here. Who is Christian then? We are all religious people. Prayer and Bible reading should always go together. This means we must fill our prayer with scripture. That is the meaning. Whatever you want to say in your prayer should come from where? Scripture, not the one, uh, the book, the name of Jesus, <laughs> the my enemy. What we are saying in your prayer, where do you get them? Prayer has language. You must speak his language. Prayer and Bible reading should always go together. You must fill your prayer with scripture. Fill it with scripture. What you have read. If you want it to be in line with the Holy Ghost, in line with God, you must feed your prayer with scripture. We don't know how to pray. The Holy Ghost help us in our witness. What are we talking about? We are saying you have not been filling your prayer with scripture. We are saying you have not been doing the right thing we are saying you are reading the Bible as if you are reading literature. We are saying you are reading the Bible as if you are reading history. This is what we are saying. Great danger. I can see why you are having a nightmare. I can see why you complain how you are doing, how you are feeling. One fact that make the weather girl so unique, so special, is the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. The thoughts of the Bible are from the Spirit. It's not from our Father. It's not from you. It's not from T.B. Joshua. The language is from men. But the thought of the Bible are from the Spirit. Tell your neighbor, the thought of the Bible 
are from the spirit and the language is from men What are you saying? Are you saying what the Holy Spirit is saying? If one preaching, teaching, praying, counseling is not in line with the Holy Ghost, he is merely saying words, talking to the air, because the thoughts of the Bible are from the spirit and the language is from men that is why you will not begin to see me disturbing you with verses of the bible i open the book of the open the book of the it's just reference the word directs from the spirit you must develop your relationship with the holy ghost by reading your Bible daily without grudges. To develop your relationship with the Holy Ghost, you must read your Bible with the free spirit. You must read your Bible with a free spirit. Tell your neighbor. If not, you are reading history. You know those novel James Hadley Chase and all others. If the word dominates your mouth, it will dominate your heart. And if the word dominates your heart, it will influence your conduct and your character. You keep saying, why are this? I'm a Christian. No, no, no. Because this way, I have not influenced your character. You say, it's not possible for me. I, 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 I've tried my best. No, I don't know why. When you are reading novel, you are reading history. Wow, I like your Bible. Because it's very small. Mm. And it's very neat. Oh my God. How old is this Bible? I want to encourage you. You must read your Bible slowly. Because it is the wisdom of God. Slowly. Attentively. And repeatedly. So, there's no way you can read something slowly, attentively, and repeatedly under tension and pressure. It's not possible. When you're under pressure and tension, you know what I mean. Me, you can only do that when you are calm, you, when you are not rough. You must read your Bible. Slowly, attentively, and repeatedly. And the more you read, the more you will understand about yourself and this God who created you. Tell your neighbor, the more you read slowly, Attentively, attentively, repeatedly, repeatedly, the more you understand about yourself, and this God who created you. Because you don't understand yourself. Every day you surprise yourself. Every day you astonish yourself. Ah, why? You suddenly wake up in the morning, you saw blood. Suddenly wake up in the morning, you bed wet. Suddenly wake up in the morning, you could not stand up. You suddenly wake up in the morning, you could not open your mouth. Suddenly open your mouth, you say, oh. 
Suddenly wake up in the morning, they have to carry you from there to the hospital. Suddenly wake up in the morning, you start to, oh, 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 oh. you don't understand yourself. You don't understand yourself. By the time we start now, you start to, I have to the power. You say, yeah? By the time they finish deliver, you say, ah, I don't know. I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> because you don't understand yourself. Say, I don't understand myself. Again? If you don't understand yourself, what will you understand? Charity so begin at home. Read your Bible slowly, attentively, repeatedly. The more you read, the more you understand about yourself. And this God who created you, you don't understand yourself? Why will you understand your creator? Each time you move to the, the place of frightening like a beach, you see the beach rise. Oh, you say, oh, God is great. God is great. You hear thunder, you say, ah, God is great. Wow, you say, oh, God is great. You don't understand yourself. You just live by imagination. You don't know whether you see tomorrow. You don't know. You have seen many of your friends, your colleagues, many people when you visit their funeral, the story. Oh my God. If they know they will die, they will have make proper arrangement. Someone would say, hello, we see tomorrow. The next thing you learn is in the grave. Don't forget, our lives are static, motionless, stagnant. Remember, no state of being is as rewarding as living in tune with God. No state of being. That's why people like me can be here today. You know many effort we have made to destroy this ministry. You know many effort we have made to silence this ministry. But JOD refused. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, no state of being is as rewarding as living in tune with God. You just need to discover whom you are and your real value. You don't know your value. Suddenly you, you need for someone to pray for you, whereas the person that is praying for you, you are better than him. And they say, in Jesus' name, I rebuke you, in Jesus' name, I bless you, I bless you. And you don't know you are supposed to be the one to pray for him. You are just like that. You don't know about yourself. You just point on your knee. Oh God, pray for me. Oh God would not say, Jesus Christ. Whereas you are supposed to pray for this oh God. Not oh God to pray for you. But because you don't know whom you are and your real value. Many that are supposed to be in the palace, they are on the street. Many are doing someone else's job. Many marry someone else's wife, someone else's husband. Discover whom you are and your real value. Tell your neighbor. When you find yourself tired and you don't know what to do, you are now turned to a copy. Suddenly you look at someone, oh, I like this attire, you go ahead. I like this business, you abandon your business. I like going to this country, you abandon going to the country you are going before. Get interested in God's plan. I know some of our members for many years, they don't have any assignment doing this church. They are only to come on Sunday and worship. They believe so much in their dirty money. 
Money is dirty. Where did you get the money? Out of the money you are bringing, where did you get it? You think that money can pay way for you? No. You see your old woman, our elderly woman, clean the shop, clean the seat for you. And you have that God to be coming, and they will clean the church. When you finish service, they will be the one to clean the bench. Get interested in his work plan, in his projects. God's opinion of yourself and of others, very important. But you don't know. What is God's opinion about you? You cannot know God's opinion of others. You cannot know God's opinion about me. This is why you live here, you're now going to tell, hey, this is what happened, this is what man said. You need someone to confirm who is TB Joshua to you. This is why we are being deceived. Someone needs to tell you, yeah, it's a man of God. The message is good. Ah, the hand is shaking. I don't understand that one. No state of being is as rewarding as living in tune with God. Because our lives are starting. There are many millionaires yesterday, but today they have nothing. They are here. And there are many poor yesterday, but today they are rich. There are many good heads yesterday, but today they are sick. Our lives are static. Lifeless. Unpredictable. This is not the promise of God. They are new every morning. New every morning. Get interested in his plan. What is God's plan? What is God's project? Are you involved? You are involved in many projects you are doing. Which one is God's project? Which of this project you are involved is God's project? In your ministry, wherever you are worship, live on church. Find one day in a week, come and join the sanitation. People clean the seat to tell the Lord that here I am. Tame me, chain me. I want to learn in your face. I want to sit in your face. your ministry if you are high over there calm down look at where you are sitting now today look at the person you are sitting with you don't know whether he's millionaire or he's average or what but you are not mine you just look for his seat but outside there you want to know where you sit where your class seat your status seat but here you can see everybody's just looking for his seat whether it's rich or my housemaid or cleaner or gardener, you don't mind. You just want to see it. Listen to the weather girl. This is the way it should be. Then when you want to work in the house of God too, don't look for a job for your state or. When the door is open, everybody wants to sit down. You don't want to know who sits beside you. But you'll be very surprised that the person beside you is your gardener. Out there. It's your driver out there. But out there, you sit with your level, your status, your class. That is the kingdom of God for you. Don't forget the word of God. It's not literature. When you are reading the word of God, you are reading the Holy Spirit. Not history. When you are reading the Bible, you are reading the Holy Ghost. It demands the state of your heart. The state of your heart must be at best to read. Because open the Bible and read, you are hearing God talk. The word of God is a tool in the hands of Holy Ghost. 
to give you peace, to give you healing. A tool to give you deliverance and salvation. The word of God is the tools in the hands of Holy Ghost. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. As a Use me, Lord. As a It is time you must work with his project. Work with God's project. Get interested in his plan to discover whom you are and your real value. Your ministry where you are worshipped, don't leave it. It's, it's your second home. Take it to your home. You wake up in the morning, you clean your floor, you clean your car, you clean your window. You have people doing that for you. But in the house of God, in a week, you must find a day. John people, clean the floor, take care of the church premises, Don't leave this for money. Money, its journey is far. You don't know where it's coming from. You may be seated. You'll be ready to answer my question. A few minutes. How have you been reading your Bible in the past? Thank you, man of God. Before understanding your teachings, Long time ago, I was reading my Bible without looking to understand God's heart, to have a best understanding of God's heart. And I have come to understand that if I want to do so, the first step is to repent and have a pure heart. The second step is now, after repentance, to... Um, to, to, to be in a humility, to be humble. Because when I am humble, then I can better be in the presence of God. Which means uh, to remain humble, if I'm not humble, that it is not nothing important. The, 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 third, uh, the third part is to be sincere with God. Thank you, thank yeah. you, clap for him. Thank, thank you, well, Lord. you have the opportunity to preach the word of God. Thank you, you, of God. You are just preaching the word of God, not even trying to answer my question straight. Yeah. Glad for him. Glad for him. Thank you, thank man you, of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can somebody tell us what are you going to make with this message? From now on, I will, I will read my Bible slowly attentively, repeatedly, and I'll be in tune with God's word. How will you be in tune with God? I will not hold grudges. I will not hold offense. No envy of anybody in life. 
Thank you. I you listen be, to that. I will be pure Amen. in my heart. That is, read the Bible with forgiveness. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. Again. Read the Bible with forgiveness. The reading of the Bible, the mind for that. The mind for this state of your heart. The mind for a free spirit. Thank you, Claire, for him. Thank you. Any other? Come on. I must be honest. Before now, I have not been reading the Bible in accordance with the teachings of today. Hmm. The teachings of today has enlightened me. Before now, there are certain things I have learned today that I must apply in the process of reading the Bible so that I can receive that pure communication with God. Because reading the Bible is communication with God and in line with his word, as you said, it will make us get inspiration from God to do his work. Clap for him, clap for him, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you, sir, thank you. Honestly, let me confess, um, in the past, because I wanted to cover more pages. For instance, if I take the book of Esther, I want to read all. So I read just as I read other books. But for the message this morning, I will take my time and read um, slowly, attentively, and repeatedly. And the second lesson is in my church, I don't used to work in the church, but for this message, clap I will visit my church him, and work in the church. No, I'm happy Thank you. You make sure that. Come on. You do you to walk. Okay, now you have decided to yes. find an assignment God wants you to do in the church. Yes, please. Okay, how do you approach this? I used to occupy myself with the work I do, so, but for now, the message I heard this morning, I will make time within say, the week. Say, how, how will you approach this? In what way will you approach what you want to do in the church? I will now sit and restructure my time and um, take a day who, within the week. Who your time? God. You want to wrestle time with God? No, please. This is what you are saying. And I'm asking you, how will you approach this? I will approach it by taking a day to visit the church and get involved in any work which is going on. Don't go and meet your leader, your pastor, the founder that I want to work in the church. That is pride. Your leader, your pastor should not choose what to do for you. You know where your shortcoming, you know your weakness. And the weakness of everyone here is pride. We need to humble ourselves. We are too proud. That is why we believe so much in money. Money answering everything. That is the voice of pride. So God and John, people in the church, work in where humility can come where you can be humble. Okay? So that's area you should look into. Thank okay? You. Thank you. Man. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You listen to that? Pride is our problem. That is why we believe so much in money. Tell your neighbor, pride, pride. is our problem. That is why we believe what? Money. There's nothing money cannot do for you. You believe money can stop you from coming to church. If money wants you to come to church, you, you come. If money does not want you to come, you will not come. If money wants you to forsake, you will forsake. If money wants you to be happy, you are happy. Wherever money asks you to go, you go. When you speak, one can hear the voice of money. When you walk, one can see the traces of money. Even your dress, that will give you opportunity and access to know more about your ministry. When you become part of the 
staff working. You don't go and meet your general overseer that I want to work. What do you want him to say? There are many departments in your ministry. It's not spirit that clean the floor. And it is not the same spirit that will pick the nylon. The, look at, come on camera, please come, come forward. Come on camera, the nylon, that's on of it. Someone will move around to pick the... Huh? Huh? A lot. Continue to come around, you see a lot. And show, show, uh -huh. not only one, move around, move around. Let's give you two minutes. What you can you see? All this has been abandoned. By the time we say the grade, they abandon everything. Are you giving them to drink it? Or you are giving them to go and say them? Church is a family. Ministry of God is a family. That is why in olden day, 99% of ministry were called family church. Family church. Family church. But today, of this is the case. You clean your window at home, but someone will clean the window in your church. You sweep the floor in your home, in your church, someone will sweep the floor. Get interested in his plan. Thank you, man of God. Mm -hmm. What I've learned today is that uh, I should let the word dominate my heart. Mm -hmm. And when it dominates my heart, it will dominate my mouth and it will influence my character. Mm -hmm. Through reading the Bible and continuous meditation, Thank it you. will dominate my heart. And it must be read with forgiveness, with a free spirit. The word you are reading, you must also use in your prayer. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank God bless you. Okay, give it to mommy here. According to the teachings of the prophet this morning, I learned that we have to read our Bible slowly, repeatedly, and attentively. attentively. And that, it, that was a thing I was not doing. I read my Bible when I want to. And I don't pray according to the scripture. I will read from Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I finish the Bible before like I'm reading a novel. But for today, I learned that I have to read it with the three points he described. And then have interest in God's project, which I do not have because I'm a church goer. I go in the church, I sit down as soon as they finish. I go back home. Clap for her, clap for her. You listen to that? It's educating us. He it says it's a church go, I will go to church after finish you go. Uh -huh. Believe that uh, you will, it's tight, they are using, it's offering the, what kind of? And many a time they will ask, please, those who know how to do this in church, join us. I will just slip away and go. Tell us more, tell us more. We want to learn. So it's as if, the prophet was talking to me directly. Uh -huh. I was touched. So I have to, I have to direct myself, hmm. not waiting for my elders in church to tell me what to do. Let me just join any group I can and join it. The group that will reshape your character, join it. Yes, daddy. And make sure, don't join group because your state or your, your class are joining the same group. No, no. Okay, make sure you join a group of people you don't have anything to do with out there. Have something to do with them in the church. People you don't have anything to do with. Look for the group they belong and join. People that are below you, below your class, join that group in the church to work. We should not carry the association out there to the church. This is what is affecting the churches today. We take our association from outside, inside. The association we have out there, we take it into the church. When you see the group of people in the church, the same association out there, they are the same class. 
that will not help us. To help our character, we need someone we can learn from. Someone who have what we do not have. Not someone who have what you have. Do you have nothing to learn from them? You are because I am. I am because you are. Where you are weak, I'm strong. And where I'm strong, you are weak. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I thank God for this opportunity. I've always heard that we must um, pray with forgive, um, forgive others and not hold grudges while praying. But most of the times I have prayed, you know, holding grudges and um, unforgiveness, believing that um, God will show me mercy. But um, I thank God for this um, privilege um, that the man of God has emphasized the need for um, praying only when your spirit is in tune with God. Thank you, man of God. This working in the house of God. So that's area we need to add. When you are going, you have to take your children along. They must join you. Thank you, sir. While you are going, I remember in those days, blessed memory, my mom. So when it's going on Saturday, when I'm not going to school, it will make sure the food in the afternoon, I eat it in the church. Because it has duty to perform in the church. Because of food, I have to follow. <laughs> you will carry the food, say, meet me. I used to play football, but I have to cancel the ball and follow because I need to eat. Our young people, whatever they need, whatever we need to do to bring them close, we have to do every proper Thing, to bring them close. Thank you, sir. To entice them, to bring them to God. So at a time when they are now mature, they will understand what you are trying to do for them. But at least certain age, we have to use our human angle, human effort to drag them close to God. Thank you. Like I have said, you make sure you join People that are below you, their department they belong, join that department. Don't go to the church and join your class out there, what they are doing in the church you want to do. So thank you, madam. Grateful. God bless you. I learned that my prayers must be filled with the, what I study from the Bible. Uh, what happens is... Uh, if I read the Bible, by, by that means, anytime I pray, the Holy Spirit will direct me to a particular part of the Bible because the Bible has a scripture for every circumstance of life. And uh, you will not be able to chew it like the way we chew our poems. But if you read it with the gu guidance of the ho Holy Spirit, in every time you are praying about an issue, the Holy Spirit will direct you to a particular scripture that you need to use to sort an issue out. That's what I've studied. And also, the second thing I studied is to be concerned with the project of God. More times, unconsciously, the more you concern yourself with the project of God, God also concerns himself with your own project. Thank you. The war is demanding so much. But what we are demanding is in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Like what I was saying in those days when I was very little, I used to follow my mommy. My mommy is one of the people that sweep the floor of the church, clean the seat. I remember any time mommy is clean the seat, sweep the floor, he will, his mouth will be, I don't know what he's saying. I realized that my mommy will be murmuring, murmuring, talking. I don't know. One day I said, Mama, what are you saying? You'll be talking when you are clean. He said, he's telling God that as I'm clean your house, clean my life. You see, 
My mom cleaned the floor, cleaned the seat, and it would be going. Sometimes when he talk, 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 I don't know what to say. Now I begin to sing again. Praise. Now I said, Mommy, what do you normally say? Because when I talk to you, you will not reply me. You keep talking to yourself. We don't know what you are saying. You say, ah, I'm telling God, as I'm cleaning this, your house, cleanse my life, clean my future, my career, my children. I think I'm one of the people God has given to me. Yes. He said, as I'm cleaning your house, sweep the floor, clean my, my family, clean my future, clean my children. Please, get interested in God's plan. Thank you. It is time to pray. You know you don't have time to pray. You say prayer, prayer, prayer. Yeah, it's, it's, it should be part of your way. When you're in the church, whatever you are doing at that moment, you pray. Doing it, pray, 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 talking to God, pray, do it. Whatever you, you come to your heart to do. God will now enlarge your course. You find yourself becomes so abundant in your doing. I think this message today is a spirit-filled message for all of us in church. Thank you. I'm guilty of all of it. I go to church with pride. Hmm. And I feel putting my dirty money is what is all clap, about clap, worshiping clap God. Clap for my brother. Clap for my brother. You listen to that? Can you say humility? You say go to church with pride and we put our dirty money and say we are supporting church. If you are supporting your church, whatever church you are belong, you are supporting your church with your money. What is the position of that church now? Man of God, this is a message my pastor have always been talking about that try to do something in the house of God that will bless you and your family. Hmm. This message, if I have my way, I will love it preached in my church on record so that people will know what it means to worship God. Clap we shouldn't be brother. churchgoers. Yes, you to that? For you doing something in the house of God with all your heart, you are doing it for your generation, your family. I, I told about the issue of my mom. In those days when I was little, I followed my mom. Was like mommy was forcing me with food. But mama will be, mama, later he will start singing. I said, mama, he will not answer me. I said, what are you saying? Anytime you are cleaning the bench, sweep the floor, what do you used to say? You always busy, mama, see your mouth moving, moving. He said, ah, what I'm saying, my little one, I say, God should clean my life, clean my children. I'm clean your house, Lord, clean. But today I can see indeed. Go to the church and join those who are not your class. Where you become a stranger among them. Go and join to humble you. This is what God wants. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your thank, education. Thank you, man of God. Thank you. You listen to our brother. There are many things you can do. Many departments. You say we are supporting our church. What is the position of church today in the world? I'm really touched with today's uh, message. I'm a person that keeps grudges. Before coming to this place, I'm, I'm holding a grudge. And with that grudge that I'm holding, would, if I've not had your message, if I read the Bible, I'm just wasting my time. Before coming here, my father slapped me for no reason. And that grudge is in my heart, and I came here. For what you preach now, I have to leave that grudge. I will develop the habit of doing away with the grudge hmm. so that this, the indwelling spirit of the Holy Spirit will come to me. If I don't do that, the Spirit of God will not come to me. And, and I cannot read the Bible slowly, attentively, and repeatedly. When you are disturbed, 
Clap for him. Clap so for I'm him. very happy Clap for, him. Clap for this message. Thank I you, have to sir. forgive my father. Thank you. Thank you. So sir. I can move forward. You listen to that? You say you want people to do good all the time, and you don't know that this life is two sides, good, bad. You should be expecting bad, good, bad, good. You need more of these challenges to strengthen you, to look proper, to look focused. You need more of slab. You need more of cheat. You need more of yeah, persecution. You have not yet arrived. This is the time you should be expecting persecution. People will embarrass you. That will help you to give yourself to prayer. The more you are embarrassed, the more you give yourself to prayer. I told you last time that our, our trouble help us to maintain our union with God. I'm happy to hear from my father here that he was unjustly slapped. I think it's, it's, it's good for us, for your strength. But most especially those of us that are stripes to get to a certain position, those of us that you need to grow in God. I just, if you're expecting this, take your time to read and to study the life of T.B. Joshua, my artisan. When you look at my artisan, you will see I have more degree in persecution than praise. I think uh, if I say I'm a professor, when it comes to persecution, but I'm just uh, first degree in praise. But I'm not expecting praise. I'm not expecting praise because my reward is over there. So thank you, thank you. I think. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with this message. When you live here today, no matter the little or big your ministry, some of us you are coming from a very small church ministry. It's good. It's not the large ministry that determines the strength ministry. The strength of the ministry is not in the large population, the uh, branch. Uh, the biggest church in the world, that is not, the stretch is not lying there. You can see just two members of a church, a ministry, that's more connected to God than the, the biggest church, the largest church. <laughs> the strength of the ministry is the relationship of the ministry to God. It's not the Population is not the crowd, it's not the fame, it's not the popularity. It's, that is not the strength of the ministry. Anything can attract the crowd. You know, people today in the world, people go by feeling what they see, what they hear. This is what people go by. So please, so if your ministry is little, just a, a few member, that is good for you. Join them, whatever they are cleaning in the church, help them clean, whatever they are doing, try it. You find time one day in a week. Don't meet your general overseer. Just meet the department consign and say, yes, I want to join. With all your heart. That will be the day of your fasting. You can choose that as a day of fasting. When you are going there with fasting and your children too have to follow you. Just like my mommy was carrying me all the time. 
see me today.